Sherman over here, and Ricardo Colasar is the timer sitting right here. Um, for the candidates, the first question will be three minutes. Um, they'll, when his two minutes is left, he'll hold up that paper. If you go over, hit the bell, please. Uh, it'll be, you have to stop talking. And the, after that, it'll be like two minutes for the questions. So at this moment, I'm going to sit down. We can start. Mm -hmm. since. I have a multitude of experience when it comes to government resources. 
I've seen where we've had the, the negative parts of it and where we need services enhanced, okay? And I see where we have the surpluses. Over this time, I've been able to um, be elected to two different positions. First, in 2009, I was elected to the Jersey City Board of Education position, along with two other members that I ran with. It was a very good experience. It gave me another area of, of knowledge that I didn't have previous to that, to see what does take place hands-on in the school system. We do have a school system that's very good, it's just that it has flaws at different times. I think that if I was elected to our city council position, it's something that I could possibly enhance and look forward to our future with the kids growing up here in Jersey City. The second position that I was elected to was in 2011, and also I ran with running mates at that time as well. And I ran in the new 33rd legislative district along with State Senator Brian Stack and Assemblyman Ruben Ramos. Over the last 18 months, 17 months that I've been in that position, once again, it's given me another hands-on view of what state services are, what state services come into Jersey City. And unfortunately, over the last two years, we've seen a, a major reduction into areas of city government, and it's affected city services. And I think what, what took place, unfortunately, is from an administrative point of view, from, from a Republican side to a Democratic side, where we have a Republican governor. I think that if I was elected to the city council, it's something that I look forward to yeah, with the Strenthal City Council, along with you know, Mayor um, Steve Fulop that you know uh, is running at the head of our ticket. We will continue fighting for the residents of Jersey City as we have in the past. It's something that we look forward to. We've never shied away from anything, as you can see tonight. You know, uh, we're absent two different candidates for whatever reasons. We did take the time here tonight, obviously, to get our message out here to everyone else, and hopefully after tonight you could spread that message if it was a good one, bad one, or indifferent, and give us ideas from there. Thank you very much. Do you or your family have a city or county job? I do have a city job. Back in 1987, when I graduated from Hudson Catholic High School, I took the Jersey City Police Department test, a civil service exam that's an open competitive exam for anyone that fits the qualifying um, criteria for that. Um, along with that, I took the Hudson County Police Department exam as well. I first started, like I said, with the Hudson County Police Department after passing that exam. It's the same exam with the Jersey City Police Department, and I retired in 1994. The second position that I do have as a government employee is with the um, State Assembly. I was elected to that position back in 2011. As for family members, um, I don't have any family members that work with the government. My mother is retired um, since she passed. Uh, my mother was a retired employee of the school system. She was a lunch lady for 22 years at public school number 20 in the area I grew up in. I do not have anyone that works for the public uh, or um, for the city. Uh, I do understand, though, that we um, we have a deficiency in, a deficiency of jobs, and that uh, we have plenty of employment that's needed for the Jersey City people. Uh, if I were if I were, was to get elected um, councilwoman of Ward D, of course, uh, that was something that will uh, I will look at. And, in special consideration because I believe that um, I don't believe in double dipping. I believe that there's enough people in the city and uh, that one person should not be um, coming to jobs or should not be coming up two positions in the, in the city. Great. Uh, great. If you're going to answer the question next, if they say that you can the microphone maybe a little bit, you might be trying to flip it up a little bit so that everybody in the back can hear you. Okay. Yeah. The third question, would you support uh, changes to zoning ordinances, especially for Palisade Avenue and East of that, that would help usher development of luxury high-rises? As well, would it be appropriate to use eminent domain for private re redevelopment of the Palisade Cliff? Would you support changes to zoning ordinances, especially for Palisade Avenue and East of that, that would help usher development of luxury high-rises? As well, would it be appropriate to use eminent domain for private redevelopment of the Palisade Cliff? I would say that not only Palisade, but any area that will require um, 
Sony reinforcement. Uh, I do understand that the Sony um, parking rules are essentials for certain areas. However, in other areas are not as necessary. Uh, for example, uh, I get complaints all the time from people that live around Palisade that are saying that people from other areas are parking around that area and they don't get tickets. However, uh, there are a specific um, residents that live in the area that do get tickets. So we, that's something we need to look at uh, very closely. Uh, on the other end, if, when approving Sony, um, reinforcement, it's something that needs to be assessed. We cannot say we can reinforce in this area or in the other area without looking at it, uh, looking at the situation closely and do, an, and do the assessment that is required. Um, Palisade might need the, the, the zoning reinforcement, however, I do understand that areas like uh, Central Avenue and, um, and, um, and, um, and other streets that have uh, major traffic uh, would require reinforcement as well. Thank you. Uh, the one thing I would say is that um, first we have to weigh the benefits. We have to weigh the benefits to our community to see what would take place. I would like to. I would like to consider obviously anything that's going to benefit our residents, and I would be open for that. Whether it's change, changing the zoning laws, you know, the planning laws, or anything that we have in the books right now. Because one thing I think that we need to do is that we can't continuously go down the street and not be able to make a left and a right. What I mean by that is that view other ideas, view other options, instead of always going with the same old and saying that we can't do this. We could always go back straight and we can turn around and do things like that. Palisade Avenue is an area that is in a high volume area for traffic, all right? We have commuter traffic that's in the area and it's accessible to General Square, downtown Jersey City, Hoboken, Weehawken, and over to New York as well. And I think that we do want to enhance Palisade Avenue so this way everything <coughs> west of it can start to redevelopment as well. One of the things back in 2001 that we were a part of, and I just want to reflect on 2001 for a minute because it was a zoning issue that we, we thought was vital to the Heights area, and, and as we can see, it's going to have a, it had a negative result. In 2001, we fought for a stop and shop to be built at um, Jefferson and um, Summit Avenues. Although that's not really the Heights, it's part of Ward C. The Heights would have been uh, a very good benefactor for it. I think it was something that was needed at the time, and is still needed at the time, because we have a wide variety of ethnic diversity, and we only have a small amount of shopping, you know, shopping centers. And I do think that it would have brought in a lot of different um, commuter traffic into the area, shopping traffic into the area. So I am open, you know, for looking at any of the zoning laws to bring them up to speed, and if it's going to be a benefit to our areas, and it's going to be successful moving westward, you know, along to um, Sherman Avenue. <laughs> Webster Avenue, New York, New York Avenue, and so on. I would totally consider it with the community. Uh, abatements do not pay more to bed taxes. Would you approve the use of abatements in your administration? Well, first of all, I would like to say that um, tax abatements, I would consider it. Okay, and it depends on what area of the city and what area of our community would I consider it for. Do I think that a tax abatement is needed in downtown Jersey City that gives a financial institute 30 years to, uh, to come in and you know, set up shop? No, I don't think so. I think that downtown Jersey City has already met that criteria that you know, other companies can move in and don't need to do that. If you ask me, along with my council members and along with the mayor, would I consider a tax abatement to redevelop Central Avenue? to redevelop Palisade Avenue, to redevelop areas of, of, of parks and stuff like that. I would totally consider it, because I would have to say what positives we do get out of something. So for me to say that I wouldn't consider a tax abatement if it was going to be a benefit to our neighborhoods and it was going to bring in, you know, uh, um, whether it was a housing market, whether it was a shopping market, or it was increasing uh, playground you know, and open space, I would consider it. That, that's a very good question because uh, we are being all as just city residents we have been impacted with tax abatement given to the waterfront uh, developers uh, without much benefit. Um, something that's very important important for everyone to know is that tax abatements are uh, a motivational you know, tool for developers to come and invest in our in our city. 
However, um, we have been using tax, tax abatement as a tool not necessarily to develop the city. Um, I am pro tax, tax abatement, however, in the right places. Um, the waterfront is a, a piece of land that everyone wants. And perhaps we might not need to use tax abatement to, to have uh, developers come and invest in the waterfront. However, there are other areas of the city that will need some type of motivation uh, to the developers so they can come and invest. Of course, if it is of benefit to the Jersey City residents, I will definitely be the first one to approve it. However, we have to consider that tax abatement need to be employment to Jersey City residents. One of the um, uh, reasons we have been given tax abatement is to have employment in return. That's not gonna, that's not happening. And tax abatement need to be need to bring employment to Jersey City residents. So if they were to bring Jersey City residents employment, yes, I would definitely approve tax abatement. If that was not the case, I would not approve tax abatement. Public safety makes up the largest part of the Jersey City budget. Do you think spending cuts to police and fire is wise, or is there other things in the budget that could be cut? Well, any time you reduce inside uh, services in any area, the city, the town, the state, wherever it is, it's always always going to have some type of impact on the community and services that are rented. All right? Uh, do I think that uh, redeployment is needed in some areas, whether it's in policing services and fire services? I do. You know, one of the things that I I think that I could be reflective of uh, being that I, I was a police officer at the time was under um, Mayor Shumley's era. Uh, and he had a policing community program that worked pretty good, okay? It was something that had a lot of resources into it. We had a lot of different bike patrols, we had foot patrols, scooter patrols, and it was something that enhanced neighborhoods and our, our residents felt comfortable as well. And we actually had Dave Count, police officer Dave Count, who was a part of that system and remains there as well. Um, so anytime you do have reductions in forces, whether it's uh, any of those services, it is gonna have a direct impact. But I'd like to look into other areas where you know we might have a fat in the budget before hitting you know what's going to be a direct impact into neighborhoods. Without a doubt, and I'm sure that you know there are a lot of services that uh, that we have in our city that have an over surplus. Okay, but I think that's something before I can go into saying that you know I would like to reduce here and there. You have to see it first, and I think that that's the important thing for me to just jump up and say that you know uh, yeah you know reduce there without having uh, the uh, the right paperwork in front of you and seeing where what other areas you do have overspending, then you can make those decisions without going into it blindly. But first, you always have to put residents first before anything else. Thank you. Public safety makes up the largest part of the Jersey City budget. Do you think spending cuts to police and fire is wise, or is there other things in the budget that could be cut? Well, um, it will be premature to say right now that um, that we need to cut the budget when we know that police is of course getting back to Jersey City residents. I would first say um, we need to make an assessment and look at the different areas that need to be uh, uh, adjust. Perhaps I know we have uh, many consultants that are probably. Uh, not a necessity to the city. On the other side, uh, we have uh, uh, criminal incidents every day in the city that will require additional support from, um, from our police department. Uh, at this point, it will be very premature to say, yes, uh, we need to cut on the police department because we know that we have a great police department. However, we need to adjust uh, some policies and make sure that we together as a, as a community work closer with the police department so we can have better results um, from a community standpoint. So um, my answer is no, I will not adjust anything at this point without making a deep assessment and look at the details as to what can be cut and what can not be cut. Mm -hmm. Do you favor 
merging any municipal agency with any autonomous agencies in Jersey City? Well, um, in the, we are in the 21st century, so we need to work smarter. Uh, if, if, if two organizations are doing um, very similar jobs and they can collaborate one with each other, why not combine it? Not to put jobs necessarily, but to do more. Okay, so that could bring uh, long term and short term um, uh, 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 savings to the community. Uh, because we've already paying a lot of taxes, so we have to make sure that we administer those taxes the proper way. So yes, I will. I will be one of the persons that will say yes that you these two organizations are doing this very similar um, task. Let's combine them. Let's work smarter. Let's move forward, and let's do more for the community so the Jersey City residents are not paying taxes that are not um, wisely uh, being administered. That issue was upon us uh, just maybe over uh, about a year ago, or 16 months ago, where we had the Jersey City Incinerator Authority along with the Department of Public Works, and it was something that you know was tossed around. You know, which one had better savings, which one has better output. But if we were to consider uh, consol consolidation in any of the services that we have, right? First, you have to see what the impact is on neighborhoods. Secondly, you have to see what the impact is on the employment situation, okay? You don't want to just come in and all of a sudden uh, dissolve jobs and, you know, put people on the unemployment line. You would like to do it structurally. And I would think that, you know, um, I can refer back in 1996, the Hudson County Police Department was being eliminated. Um, and what they did was, was a real, you know, a short plan. They never had a long-term plan for it. And it was within a three-month window that they did this, right? And they didn't give the employees that were there an opportunity to, to go into retirement, to find other um, other agencies to work for and so on. And I think that's key to it as well, right? You don't want to put people out, out of a job. But getting back to the consolidation, if we do have a wide variety of different agencies that are duplicating services, yes, you have to look into those resources. You have to turn around and say, can we do it, you know, as, as, as shrinking it without hurting the employment, without hurting the neighborhoods, and without increasing the tax base as well. It's something that you do have to look forward to, all right? It's, it's reality, all right? The years that we had, you know, back when, when people had so many different, you know, departments out there, with different divisions that were being created. We don't have that luxury. We don't have the, the, um, the benefits of money and resources right now to do so. But yes, it would be something that I would look into with my colleagues. I never mentioned cutting jobs. I said that we need to work smarter and so we can do more so the Jersey City residents are not hurt. Okay, uh, next question. Ward D is a place of a lot of two family and three family homes. Jersey City has a requirement that whenever any type of infrastructure work is being done, an off duty police officer must be hired by those paying for the work. Would that make sense? While that might make sense for large developments, should homeowners and small developments be required to hire an off-duty cop? Well, I think the requirement is because safety is considered first, all right? Because at times, you know, when um, an off-duty police officer is hired for a construction site or road project, the first thing is to take into consideration is safety, all right? So you don't want to roll out safety. And you don't want to have some of these companies, whether they're large scale, whether they're small scale, doing things, you know, first of all, that uh, wouldn't be safe for us, right? You know, entering traffic, okay, without having the proper personnel there to assist pedestrians, to assist motors, and so on. So the first thing you have to look at is the safety reason. You can't just come in and say, well, you know, it's an off-duty position, you know, and uh, this developer is only, you know, uh, 10 employees strong. You know, uh, a police officer isn't needed at this site. No, you have to assess it site by site and take it from there to make sure that you have safety first and that you have compliance of the rules, the laws, and the regulations that we have here in the city of Jersey City and the state of New Jersey. Okay, safety is first for the Jersey City residents, and um, something I um, I do understand that while we need police department to be probably looking out for the residents. We also need to keep in mind that the residents need to be uh, in a safe environment. So um, while 
it is small, it is recommended that we have a police officer uh, looking out for the safety of the community. We do understand also that we have certain laws that have been looked at for, for a long period of time. So it would be a nice um, opportunity uh, once I'm elected um, as a city councilwoman to look into those laws and um, regulations to make sure that they are in compliance and in, align in alignment with what the current situation of the community is. Property taxes have increased 84% from 2005 to 2010. The debt service has increased from $20 million a year in the 1990s to $60 million in this year's budget of 2013. Would you vote an ordinance that will do a desk audit um, for um, the jobs that are being held in Jersey City? Yes, it's a simple answer. Yes, I would consider it. All right, you know, uh, moving us into uh, 2013 and on, we have to look at those resources and consider what is best for the Jersey City taxpayer. Okay, because we have been hit hard over the last recent years, and I would something anything that comes to the tax situation that we have. All right, we need to expand on it. We need to look at areas that this way we can save for our future without hurting the homeowner and the taxpayer. And In the last eight years, our taxes have increased 80%. However, on the other end, uh, our budget has increased, has tripled, uh, has, uh, has increased almost three times what it was eight years, 10 years ago. Um, once I'm elected, um, I think I, I will recommend to review um, all the employments to make sure that um, all the positions that currently are covered are required. Again, I'm not looking at uh, increase, I'm increasing this uh, unemployment or, um, or eliminating, eliminating positions, but I think it's really important to look at from the standpoint that we have to uh, make sure we're spending our money smarter, that we are uh, designating those resources where are needed, and that we're not wasting our resources because at the long, I mean at the end of the day the taxpayers are the ones that are going to be paying the price and are the ones that are going to be paying higher taxes and all I hear every time I knock on people's door is I'm paying more taxes I'm getting more services where my money is going so we have to make sure that the taxpayers are happy with I mean, of course, no one wants to pay more taxes, but at least that they're getting the service that they require, that our parks are being repaired, they're being well maintained, our, clean, our, our streets are being clean, that are, um, in general, that our tax, the taxpayers are being served the way they're supposed to. Crime in the Heights is an issue to many residents. A senior citizen was just shot last week by three Hoboken residents. Drug dealers operate in many areas and attract unwanted traffic into our communities. Prostitutes are known to solicit on one and nine and other major roads as the temperature gets warmer. Given that the Jersey City Police Department has limited resources, where would you like the mayor and police chief to direct more police resources? Uh, watching our borders, targeting drug activity, or fighting prostitution? Well, that's a, a, a difficult one because it all uh, it pertains to safety of our community. And I think in that aspect, we need to have a balance and we need to um, uh, assess what areas and what is like the way of each of those concerns. They all are concerns, valid concerns. Our voters need to be covered, our drug dealers are need to be checked on to make sure that they're not drawing and that they, uh, we are in a safe environment quality of life for our families is the number one thing. So I will not consider cutting on anything. I think all of those aspects are important. However, I do want to make an assessment. I want to weigh each of those aspects to see which one is the, is the, which ones are the pain points and then direct more resources to those areas. You do have to prioritize when it comes to uh, policing and crime prevention. The first thing that I would look at is that 
uh, violent crimes and a person being the victim, him or her, themselves. Okay, I think that's one of our priorities when it comes to a person being robbed on the street, a home being burglarized. Okay, uh, although I know that we have to, as an agency and as a city, we have to combat all crime. Okay, but you do have to prioritize it where I wouldn't want to put major resources into prostitution and then forget about the homes that are being burglarized or the person that's walking down the street and being mugged. So I think that you know we have to turn around and say, what are our priorities? Up here over the last two years in the Heights area of Ward D, crime has risen 18%, okay, various aspects, all right? So, but I'm not telling everyone that you know you have to live in fear. That's not the one thing that I'm saying. The one thing I'm saying is that you know we do have to live with the knowledge all right, that at times crime does take place. All right, it takes place here in Jersey City, it takes place in Winhurst, and it takes place in Hohokus, New Jersey, okay? So our police department is doing the best that they can, okay, with the resources that we have. Over the years, some of our resources have diminished, okay? But the personnel is doing the best that they can. But you do have to look at it, you do have to say, yes, you have to prioritize what comes first. And I think a person's individual safety comes first, and then their home res residential safety comes second, and then prioritize from down there. Thank you. The rebound will happen next year, and people will expect to pay before they can appeal their taxes. Would you favor a resolution in which residents in Ward D, when taxes might double, that they can appeal their taxes without paying? And also, would you support legislation on the state level that if it doubles or triples, they can phase in a five-year period? Once again, like I said, with anything when it comes to taxes, you have to consider all your options, all right? But if we do consider, let's say, for instance, where a person can appeal it, all right? And here it was, we were losing, say, 65 to 75% of the revenue, all right? We weren't getting it into the budget. Then I would have to obviously consider that as well to say that you know I'm going to get the monies that will pay for the other services that we do have. So you have to say that you know you structure it once again that word that I keep, keep using. You can't just say well yeah let everyone appeal it and then all of a sudden if we don't get the taxes into our system where do we go where do we go to borrow that money we don't have any banks that we borrow that money from. I mean, most times it's obviously the taxes that we do pay. But the reval is going to be upon us. I think that it should be reassessed. I think it's something that uh, that we could hold off for a couple of months because we do have an election process that's taking place. Uh, you need to have an opportunity to have a new mayor come in, you have an opportunity for a new city council to come in. And I think those ideas from, from those elected officials should be considered along with what the community wants as well and to maintain services at a high level without us being in the pocket, but I would consider it as well. Now, those of us that have families understand how difficult it is to manage a house call without with having the concern that taxes might go up and you might not be able to pay um, to bills um, a year from now. I would definitely consider to have a resolution that will, um, of course, take in, consider in consideration the taxpayer. Of course, we will need to look in detail as to what the situation of our current residents is, and also consider what our responsibility as a city um, for the cities are, because you know we pay taxes, uh, uh, we pay our responsibilities from the taxes. So yes, why not? We can have a resolution that can alleviate the burden of the Jersey City residents, because for quite some time we have been paying taxes, and it is not our fault that our taxes are going up, and that the 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 the, the the real estate market is uh, it's, uh, it's it's having its worst uh, stage. So yes, I will consider to make an assessment and look at the situation and probably benefit some of the not benefit but alleviate some of the burden that the families of Jersey City are impacting. Now, Mayor Hall, you questions about eminent domain. I, I tried asking it earlier and it kind of was a two-part question. I think anybody, everybody only heard the first part. But uh, in a recent Supreme Court case, Kelo versus the city of New London, the court ruled that local governments can use eminent domain for the purposes of private economic development. Would you support the use of eminent domain for private economic development in Jersey City? 
For one, you have to always see what the economic value to the residential population is. You have to take into consideration the residential population terms. Right? That's always been key. Uh, to, to ask a generalized question instead of a specific question is always a tough one because you don't know what's going on. If it was a redevelopment area that provided, say, for instance, a new school, I would have to consider it, okay? If it was to bring in low and middle income housing that's vitally needed here in the Hyde section, I would consider it. And there are other options that obviously are out there as well. So I don't want to just give a generalized answer to a question that, you know what, uh, you need to expand on. So I would. I would the question was specifically about private economic development. It wasn't about building schools. Well, we could have a private, say for instance, we could have a private uh, school built as well. So there are private schools that are out there, uh, I think, in our communities. Uh, and you have to, uh, the biggest thing is you always have to look at what the economic value is going to be to the residential population. Does the residential population, does it get enhanced by that? Does it decrease what people are paying in taxes, okay? If that's one of the major issues that we have and it's going to decrease what we pay in taxes, I would consider it something that, you know, I think that I would be a fool as an elected representative of our neighborhood not to consider because taxes is one of the main three issues that we have here throughout the state of New Jersey, so I would consider it. court ruled that local governments can use eminent domains for the first of purposes of private economic development. Things more, the, the case around the, uh, the issue of building malls and, and, and hotels and whatnot. Would you support the use of eminent domain for private economic development in Jersey City? I would say if he's, if he's going to be a benefit for Jersey City residents, I would. Um, that's the only thing I will be concerned about. In the last several five budgets, the city has been floating bonds as police officers retire. Our bonding debt is through the roof. And the city keeps on bonding and pushing off the debt for the next administration. Two thirds of this city are property owners because of tax bill, and one third is tax abated. So they're not going to have their taxes go up as the property owners. In the 1990s, the city considered a business tax. Uh, but it didn't go through. Considering the fact that reval will happen and people won't be able to pay their taxes, we will continue to bond as police officers leave uh, service of the city. Would you support a business tax in which we receive money from the business community? All right, first I'd like to say that it's uh, it's not just bonding for just the police officers, retirees, you know, from fire departments and so on. And those employees over the years, um, under the system that was provided, you know, under the guidelines that were provided, earned those money. So it wasn't like it was something that was given to them as a bonus or anything like that. So it's something that was earned, so you know, you have to consider it. Yes, I would consider, you know, uh, a tax, you know, on the business, you know, so this way we could alleviate the burden of what's taking place here to the residential population. Uh, in the 1990s, it was something that I thought of that I thought it was a good idea, and I would like to explore it again if I was elected, along with the colleagues of city council representatives and with the mayor himself. But yes, I would look, I, I would look to explore that. Um, that's the same thing area because our business, uh, small business owners, are also being impacted with taxes. It's not like businesses in, in its best um, um, era. So. Um, I, I, I don't want to say yes. I, uh, I would recommend a tax to business owners. However, uh, that's something that when we elected, I will look into it deeper to see of what benefit will be to the Jersey City residents and also to the, uh, that is not going to be a burden for the, uh, for the businesses. All right, uh, next question. Jersey City is a very diverse city with a large number of immigrant groups. Unfortunately, some immigrants are some immigrants are not living here with proper documentation for whatever reason. Trenton and Princeton are two New Jersey municipalities among cities nation nationally that have been issuing IDs to those living here undocumented to help them better access business and social services. In lieu of federal immigration reform, would you support Jersey City issuing ID cards to those living here without documentation? 
Tracy can answer the first time. Oh, he's a um, something to have um, to consider is that um, it's best to have everyone documented so we know uh, where everyone is at. Uh, if we have a document, <laughs> if we have the documented people, then uh, we don't know where people are, so we have no control of, or, of our residents. Uh, in addition, we probably can get contributions from those uh, that are that have um, IDs to also contribute to society by paying us uh, taxes too. Uh, I do agree that uh, documentation is vital, all right, because uh, you do need to have identification out there and it just gives us a balance of how we can measure government, how we can measure services, what's needed, what's not needed, where there's a surplus and where there's overspending and so on. But the first thing that I would like to say is that you, know, you have to, and all of us, I think, in my family at one time were immigrants as well. So you don't want to take away from the, the citizens' rights that we do have nowadays. Do we want to expand on the immigration services that we do have? Without a doubt, you want to give everyone that opportunity of having a dream and having a vision and saying, you know, what, one day, you know, I, I, I want to own property here and I want to move on. I want to become a United States citizen, you know, with the, with full benefits and stuff. But you don't want to hurt the current people that we currently have, right? That's one thing that you have to balance. You have to say, we do have a population that still needs services that are United States citizens, all right? You don't want to take away from what those people have fought for over the years to gain, become a US citizen. But I do, I think that documentation does help us, okay? It does give us a guide as to, you know, who's in our country, who's in our state, who's in our county, and so on. And then we can break down services from there. Should there be term limits for the council or mayor? And mayor, I should say, term limits. Term, term limits has always been, you know, a question. You know, uh, some people, you know, think that we should have them. Some people should. Okay. I agree that, you know, with this council coming in, that uh, yes, we have uh, term limits. Term limits that we're going to explore, and that you know, I support. One of the things I would like to say is that if we have an elected official and he or she is doing a wonderful job. Do we want to take away that service that we have? Because we have many of the public officials that are out there that are doing tremendous work. We can refer to our uh, North Hudson counterparts of, of Mayor Nick Sacco, uh, Mayor Brian Stack. And if we had term limits there, and they've been providing very good services over the years and stuff like that, you would take away from the residential population and putting that person into office. I don't like taking away things of a person's right, our right to vote and our right to select individuals, you know, who should be our public servants, should be in the hands of the voters. The voters don't want to put that person back into office. They're going to go to the polls, whether it's in May, whether it's in June, or whether it's in November, they're going to say, I don't want that person back. He or she isn't providing those services. But the one thing, like I said, the biggest key that we have to remember is not about the public, public official itself, it's about what's right for the voter. Don't take the don't take the process out of the hands of the residents. Let the residents decide who they want to be their public servants. I do have to disagree with that, and, um, and just uh, let me explain why. Um, as leaders in the community, our responsibility is. Not only that, once we are elected to do a good job for the community, because that's what we elected for, but also to develop leadership in the community. Yes. If you have two terms to show what you can do for the community, then your responsibility as leader is to have someone prepare or to uh, nurture. We have tons of leaders that will be able to do a great job that they can take the lead and take the next step. That's why our lead, uh, our, our should uh, have most hope because they think that only the same people are over and over being elected and they feel like there's not a chance for anyone else. I do believe that if someone's doing a good job, they can be elected for two terms. But 
also, if that person is doing such a good job, to be responsible for making sure other leaders from the community have a, a, a chance also. All right, I'm going to go back to the mic, even though it's echoing a little bit, but uh, I was told some people in the back didn't hear me. Pay to play has been a hot button issue in this election. Would you support expanding pay to play laws that bar city vendors from donating not just to city candidates, but county, state, and federal? Pay to play has been an issue that's arisen you know, over the last several years, and I'm sure it's been a hot topic for about a good you know, eight to 10 years now. I would explore that. Uh, First of all, I wouldn't want to violate anyone's rights that he or she has to contribute. And I would want to follow, obviously, the state guidelines in doing so. And I think that's the most important thing that we would like to do. As on a local level, all right, if we can create ordinance to do that and to, uh, to not, you know, resource and, and continue to go into the same vendors, you know, where, uh, when it comes to political contributions, I would consider it. You have to, you know, like I said, we're moving into the, uh, a new era of 2013 and on, and we're not used to, you know, we're not going to do the things that we did in the past. And obviously, we can see that, you know, with what took place uh, several years ago with all the corruption and stuff like that, it was people trying to get around the system. So you want to make sure that the system first is something that could work and it's going to benefit our community. Um, I'll just add to that. I believe I mentioned this before. Uh, we have lots of regulations and uh, laws that. Um, are no longer in compliance or with what the current situation is. Uh, once I'm elected, I will uh, look into those to make sure that they are in alignment with what the our current, um, uh, what the situation is at this point, and then uh, take it from there. I, I wouldn't say I'm a real <coughs> What is the one thing you think is lacking in more deep? We have several things that we lack, all right, but what I would like to make a priority is uh, low and middle, middle income level of housing and seeing housing that we need. Uh, this area of the city, uh, which has one of the highest residential populations, we don't have that service. But that would be one of the keys uh, that I would like to look into is, is housing on a lower le um, income level and on a middle income level as well. impacting our residents, especially in New Jersey City High. Um, while uh, sometimes we think that we think that certain things could be the priority, the residents <coughs> think that uh, probably transportation from west to east could be the priority for them. However, um, we have to prioritize our needs. And like he said, uh, low income level residency um, is necessary. On the other side, for those that have families, probably getting our parks in the best condition could be their priority. So we have to take all the considerations of the residents and prioritize and move along and move and move forward in the best direction so not only one side of the community is benefit so but so that everyone um, is equally benefited. Well, that's going to end uh, the official questions for tonight. So I'm going to ask the candidates to make their last statement for three minutes about why voters should vote for them and uh, any plans that, you know, specific ideas that they have for when they get elected. Well, first, like I said earlier, thank you for coming out here tonight. It means a lot to us to have a, uh, to have a, you know, a community out here to listen to us and to get our message out there. One thing I would like to say, once I'm elected with uh, with Team Four moving forward into uh, into a four-year term, is that the three things that I would like to prioritize. One, like I said already, is low and middle income level housing. Okay, that's the first thing that I would like to prioritize. Second is redevelopment of Central Avenue. I think redevelopment of Central Avenue is vital to our existence. Okay, I think that we need to bring in some um, brand name stores so that they could be anchors. Okay? <coughs> this way that our local merchants right now that are in existence can benefit that off of that as well. If you look at Central Avenue over the last 15 to 20 years, you have to say that it's gone downhill, that the stores that we had from years ago aren't there. 
Does that mean that we can't come back, start revitalizing Central Avenue? Without a doubt, we could do something as well to enhance the quality of life and the quality of services that we have on Central Avenue. The third thing that I would think is a priority is obviously the crime that has taken place. I think we need to revalue what our police services are. I do think um, highly of the community policing services that we do have, that we had in the past. I think it was something that helped reduce crime. It put a, um, it put a, a sense of uh, a community back in with the police department where you knew who your police officer was and you felt comfortable talking to him or her and saying, you know, hey, I would like to tell you about something that's taking place in our neighborhood because you felt that confidence that he or she was going to perform the services and the job that was necessary. I think over the years, uh, people that have known who I am know that I am committed to Jersey City. Jersey City is my passion. Jersey City is my love. I'm not running for the first time. The first time I did run for public office was back in 2007. And since then, I think we've expanded who we are. We've been getting a message out there. Something that I will continue to do. It wasn't that I was a fly-by-night and I was asked by a mayoral candidate, hey, would you consider running? And just out of ha ha, yeah, I will consider running. No, I want to be our elected official. I want to continue moving the heights forward. I want to move Jersey City forward. This is my love. This is my neighborhood. I'm not going anywhere. It's something that I enjoy. I have a passion for it. I think I've served the community in many assets, and I think that it's something that I'm going to continue to do. I haven't changed that since being elected. I still do the volunteer work, whether it's in church services, little league services, community services, and school services. If anyone knows who I am, they usually would say that Sean Connors is everywhere, and that's what I want to continue doing when I am elected to our city council on May 14th along with Team Folk. And thank you for coming out here tonight. First of all, thank you for coming here tonight. It is a pleasure for me to, this is the first time I'm here. And I'm very pleased to be here. I, again, want to thank the members of the panel for all those wonderful questions. Uh, and um, something I want to share, and um, it's something that I very, I'm very passionate about, and it's the fact that it's um, that I like to work for the community with, uh, without asking for anything for exchange. I have been doing that for, for quite for quite some time, and I think I can continue doing that for. Uh, for many more years. Uh, like I said, um, I am a professional. I have two business degrees. Uh, I have a business administration degree and a marketing uh, a marketing degree. Uh, I am a, um, I'm in the process of uh, getting my MBA in with a concentration in project management. I'm a very project management person. Uh, I believe that we need to finish what we start. Uh, we need to bring hope to the youth and we need to, as leader, ensure that we develop other leaders in the community so they can move forward and we can bring fresh blood to the community. Uh, I am also a, the president for the Sharing Grace Foundation, uh, an organization that, that bring, brings hope and alleviate the conditions of the homeless. We have hundreds, thousands of homeless in the uh, Jersey City community and we have to make sure that we also don't leave those people behind. Uh, I am also the director for Jersey City Parents Care. It's an organization that not only helps bridge the gap between parents and also the, uh, the children so they can have a better uh, development in their school. Our children mm -hmm. are the future. We have to take care of our kids. I know that as a council person, I don't have legally a, an impact in education. However, we as council people can um, we can be uh, of empowerment to those kids. We can be of influence to those kids. In addition to that, I am also a woman who is actively involved with Women Building Bridges. It's an organization that fights against, um, to advocate for women's rights. For those reasons, and many, many others, I'm a parent, I'm a business owner, I am an active community activist, and uh, for many more, many reasons, I do understand that you guys need to give me a chance because I'm not affiliated with any political uh, party. I am Democrat by heart. My heart is Democrat, but I'm not reporting to Healy. I'm not reporting to Fulop. I don't depend on anyone for to, uh, sponsoring my campaign. We, Grace, Jerome, 
and my volunteers have paid for all the campaign. Probably some people say that we haven't had that many promotions, but it's because we're paying for our campaign. No one's sponsoring our campaign. Campaign, And you know why is that? Because once you start having people sponsoring your campaign, you depend on them to do what you need to do. Jersey City needs Thank you, to do the improvement. Thank you. Thank you.